A very good evening uh, to everybody watching. Thank you for joining us tonight on the Evening Review. My name is uh, Toivo Njabela. Tonight on the platform we are joined by Dr. Alfredo Hengari. He is uh, the spokesperson of President Hage Genkob, who just recently returned from the 78th um, edition of the UN General Assembly in uh, the USA. And uh, we just want to catch up with uh, Dr. Hengari as to how that trip went. Thank you, Doctor, for making time always. Uh, uh, the President is back in the country. Um, he delivered his speech. He uh, held several side events there. I if you can summarize uh, how that uh, went. Uh, now, um, um, thank you very much, Trevor, for having me on the evening review. It's always a pleasure for me to be here uh, and uh, to share uh, with uh, fellow Namibians. Um, President Gengop um, undertook a highly successful visit to the United Nations General Assembly. Yeah. As you correctly put it, uh, the 78th session of that assembly. New York, uh, a number of uh, highlights for us as a country. Um, mm -hmm. uh, the meeting with um, the Federal Chancellor Olaf Scholz, for example, is, a, is an important highlight because of the issues that are in the bilateral relation with Germany mm. um, and also the opportunities that exist for, for both countries to move together. Uh, President Gengop and, uh, President and uh, Federal Chancellor Olaf Scholz will chair uh, the, f the Summit for the Future next year, uh, which is a very important UN Summit that will look at uh, how the world can uh, recalibrate the multilateral system in order to serve the interest of humanity much better. And uh, the work on that summit has commenced. Uh, President Gengop and President uh, and uh, the Federal Chancellor met uh, to discuss how they will work together in terms of executing that summit. And uh, next year, February, there will be a ministerial meeting that will take place. So. Um, it's a big honor for President Gengop in Namibia to, to be given the mandate of, uh, of co-chairing that very important summit. But of course, uh, the, uh, the, the question of climate change is, uh, is key mm. uh, on President Gengop's agenda, uh, one of the champions uh, in, that, in, that, in, that, in that field, um, with Namibia doing a lot of good things in the green hydrogen space. And of course, the third one that... Uh, was discussed during that uh, meeting with uh, uh, Chancellor Olaf Scholz was the um, the issue, the unfinished business of the genocide. Mm. Uh, but all in all, to be uh, honest, uh, it was a highly successful uh, visit to the United Nations. Uh, the statement by Namibia uh, highlighting a number of important issues mm. uh, uh, globally, the the challenges humanity is facing in terms of uh, uh, poverty. Uh, but of course, we do know that uh, COVID-19 um, um, also reversed our gains mm -hmm. in the fight against poverty. And President Gengob did put a spotlight on some of those issues, uh, what Namibia is doing uh, in order to assist humanity in terms of decarbonizing and also um, uh, the President did highlight the, the the importance of the United Nations that is fit for purpose, mm. basically um, commenting, providing a very um, constructive commentary on uh, our common agenda, which uh, was outlined by the Secretary General of the United Nations, Antonio Guterres. So um, these are some of the highlights that I could uh, um, highlight, you know, in a, in a manner that is introductory. Yeah, wonderful. Um, Doc, the I saw, I've, I've noticed, and you, it's good that you mentioned it, of course, the, the issue of, of climate change, the green evolution that Namibia is trying to be part of. And, and the question that I was asking some of uh, <laughs> the people, uh, was it this week, was to say, what are we, wh which agenda are we actually pushing here? Is it carbon carbonization or decarbonizing? Because we are driving green hydrogen on this, and, and then we are also pursuing um, fossil fuels in our country. Yes, um, it's a question that is uh, quite uh, asked in a manner that is recurrent, but uh, President Gengob has been very clear on that. Um, Namibia is one of the least 
polluting countries. We do know that. And Africa generally is a continent that does not pollute our earth. Uh, Africa's contribution to um, carbon emissions is well below 4%. And um, basically much of it is also from South Africa. The rest of Africa pollutes the, the earth by 1.5%, uh, with the exception of South Africa. So it tells you that we are not harming our earth mm -hmm. and our people. Uh, therefore, we should not look at our discovery of oil and gas as inconsistent mm -hmm. with the agenda that we are pursuing. President Gengob has emphasized the fact that, th that we know that uh, oil is short term. Mm. These are stocks that deplete, but our commitment to the green energy transition is, is long term. Mm. Uh, green hydrogen will take a bit of time to come online, uh, but it is the future. Yeah. Even though uh, tangibly investments are occurring as we speak in the green hydrogen space. Yeah. Uh, last week, uh, a Belgian and Namibian company rolled out, started to roll out the infrastructure yeah. to put up uh, a green hydrogen fuel station. Uh, jobs are being created through that. Uh, but we are also protecting the environment through some of those initiatives. So easily, um, Namibia can offset its emissions through um, mine, uh, 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 drilling oil and get, getting oil online by mm. the, the initiatives that we are concretely undertaking in the green hydrogen space, in, uh, in the Karas region, uh, as in Sokobun district, as, I, as I've said, and, as, and also in the Dauris constituency. Mm. So we are pursuing uh, uh, our opportunities as a new oil and gas frontier because we need to uh, provide a livelihood to our people. We yeah. need to use our natural resources, our natural endowments to provide, to fight poverty, to, uh, to, to, to increase uh, uh, the quality of our education system, to, to build more hospitals and to strengthen mm our social protection system, which is um, quite extensive, but also one of the best on the African continent. Yeah, yeah. The, the UN General Assembly, uh, Doc, is it uh, still, um, especially that, that annual assembly, is it still uh, important? We see uh, presidents of different countries uh, addressing uh, uh, empty chairs there, um, people essentially saying African leaders go there for a small break in the Big Apple. Um, is it a, is, does it remain an important platform? No, uh, it is a, a very important platform uh, in terms of Namibia getting its voice heard. And it's quite uh, sad that um, we look, we look down on ourselves as Africans by saying African leaders go there uh, to take a break. A break from what? Because uh, when uh, President Gengop is at the Uni United Nations General Assembly, his agenda is packed. You have many bilateral meetings. You have uh, a series of, of uh, high-level events to which the president is invited. Uh, Namibia is recognized by Oxfam, by the UN, for its fight against inequality and poverty. Yeah. And President Gengob gets invited to speak at such events. President Gengob uh, spoke at the, at the summit on the Sustainable Development Goals because of the voice, the important voice that Namibia carries mm. when it comes to some of these issues. So uh, it's quite uh, unfortunate that there are those who harbor such views about a continent that is on a positive trajectory, a continent that is rising, a continent that has been strengthening its institutions of governance, and Namibia specifically, mm. a country that is a model on the continent in a number of domains, uh, freedom of the press, we are the leading country in that, in that, in that domain in Africa. Globally, we, we are in the top 25, beating in some of the industrialized countries. Mm. So we do have a story to tell and to share with, uh, with other actors 
from um, business and also from politics. So the United Nations General Assembly uh, is an important convening point mm. for leaders to meet and to discuss issues within a short space of time because there's no other assembly of that nature for all leaders. And, and Tuevo, really, would you want to tell me and the Namibian people that uh, when President Gengob joins over a hundred heads of state and government at the United Nations General Assembly, um, it's not something that we all should be proud of, especially mm. in, the, in terms of the work that ought to be carried out there. Well, are, the, are all these elected leaders, all these elected leaders who are there, are they wasting time? When they're, li when they're not listening to our president, then we, because it's, it's a huge delegation from across the world, but you come to the actual venue, and uh, I'm not referring to Namibia specifically, but I'm just saying uh, as a general concern. Well, uh, it's, uh, the, the hall is much emptier when uh, maybe it's uh, the ministers talking and so on, but when it comes to the heads of state, yeah. uh, the hall is, uh, you, you have a decent attendance at all times. I hear you. So I don't think that we should really get into the space where as Africans yeah. we look down on ourselves and we, we, we talk about ourselves in ways uh, and that, that are so disparaging yeah. because uh, this is serious business. Uh, to be elected is, is a sign of confidence uh, by the sovereigns who are the people yeah. and uh, they expect Namibia, Namibia's voice to be heard at different platforms. And I think in the case of President Gengob, uh, there are many invitations that the president declines. Yeah. Many, many, many. Yeah. And uh, he only selects those ones where he feels that um, there is um, value add for Namibia as a country in as far as representation is concerned at the level of the head of state. Yeah. We will go for a quick break and then I return with uh, Dr. Alfredo Hengari. Welcome to What's Cooking, where culinary passion meets expert insights. Somebody must really want to cook and want to cook good food. Immerse yourself in the bustling world of professional kitchens as top chefs create mouthwatering dishes. Join us for in-depth interviews as our host explores the experiences and expertise of our guest chefs. Don't miss out. Tune in to What's Cooking on NTV every Friday at 2100 hours and let the culinary adventure begin. We are so excited to be kickstarting your morning with the entertainment. Everything was happening mm. during this past weekend. Yes. Exciting news. Wow, no, she was killing it already. In my opinion, I don't see anything wrong with him serving the full term. As well as keeping you informed on the issues that you need to know happening in and around our country. The conversation with uh, Dr. Hengari continues. Now, Doc, the, you alluded to the meeting with uh, the Chancellor of, uh, of Germany. Um, and linked to that is the lecture, public lecture that the president um, addressed in France, uh, where he made remarks that has caused a stir. This week you issued a statement contextualizing and clarifying what he meant, but what everybody understood the president to mean is that uh, he compared genocide and apartheid, and uh, he said that apartheid was uh, worse. Um. No, I'm, I'm glad that you mentioned the statement that we issued that provides context uh, and clarifications. But one uh, that didn't appear in your newspaper, and unfortunately. It will still appear. Um, but uh, the, the reality and the facts are that President Gengob did not compare the genocide and apartheid. He didn't say that. I have the, the text. Maybe, maybe just didn't mean it the way it no, was. No, the, the but, text, but the, verbatim the, the verbatim quote, is at no forward. point does the president compare the genocide. He does not talk about the genocide in relation to the apartheid regime. And we all know that. 
it's uh, what the media and some politicians have tried to, to concoct in order to distort the tangible achievements uh, that Namibia as a country registered through its partic participation at the United Nations uh, in New York. Uh, that ought to be our focus as Namibians, the question of development, the question of fighting poverty. Uh, we tend to be caught up in polemical conversations that don't unite us but seek to divide us. But the president is focused on the agenda of unity. And even on that issue of uh, genocide, uh, Tuevo, you will agree with me that over the past eight years, the progress that we have made as a country, that we've made as a government in advancing the issue of genocide has been remarkable. It's only in 2015 that the discussions on genocide are formalized, are institutionalized with Germany. It's under President Gengob that a special envoy is appointed especially when we're in the person of Ambassador Gavire, uh, someone who, with royal blood. Ambassador Gavire was the secretary of Chief Kutako. Mm -hmm. He wrote letters for Kutako. So there's n no one is more qualified than him to lead that type of conversation with Germany because he knows the history, he knows, he knows the issues. And in 2021, May, we have a draft declaration where we have a number of gains. Germany agrees to the fact that it committed a genocide in Namibia against the Ovahero and the Nama people. Germany agrees also that it committed atrocities against other Namibians. Germany agrees that it owes Namibians an apology. These affected communities must, they, they, they deserve an apology that must be offered at the highest level of the German state. Germany agrees to reparations. O on all these three points, Germany has been refusing all these years. But under the leadership of President Gengob, we arrived at those conclusions with Germany. Mm -hmm. Yes, the president has said that uh, uh, the, the, the quantum is not sufficient. True. But the president also said something very important, that the lives of Namibians that have been lost, yeah. no amount of money can bring back those lives. And what the president has been trying to do all along is to locate the discussion about genocide within the franchise of Namibian unity. And that's very important, yeah. uh, notwithstanding the fact that uh, there are two communities that were targeted, it's over Herero and the Nama, uh, which we all agree because the extermination orders were, were targeted at them. But this is also a Namibian question, and we should treat it as such. That's why it's unfortunate that there are those who try to tribalize it, and, uh, they, and that's why they also use every available platform that they see to attack others, to divide Namibians. And the comments of the president in, uh, in Paris at Sciences Po, um, in no way are they tantamount to a comparison bet between apartheid and the genocide. The president doesn't talk about the genocide and apartheid in that, in that same context at all. Yeah, I hear you. So, Doc, uh, another subject that I want to drag you in, um, which is not um, necessarily a direct domain, but I think uh, you can give us some insights, and that is the... You spoke about press freedom earlier, yeah. how highly we are regarded in the world, how we can go to the platform like the UN General Assembly and say we are number one in Africa. That's very, very important. Uh, it's very, uh, we are proud of it as, as practitioners in the, in, the, in the industry. But something very 
very drastic happened. The managing editor of New Era Publication Corporation, uh, Jonathan Biekes, has been suspended. And there's a lot of speculation as to what might have led to that. The dominant theme is that uh, the state has everything to do with uh, him getting suspended. Are you aware of anything at all from your corner that, uh, that in that regard? Yeah, uh, Twivo, before I get to that, just allow me to deposit one quick point. Yes, please. Uh, and that is the fact that um, President Gengop, as a scholar, has also written on uh, the question of uh, the of German colonialism, the atrocities that have been committed against Namibians by by German by the German colonial regime. He says in his thesis, doctoral thesis, State Formation in Namibia, 2004, he says that uh, the, f German, the German form of colonialism was the worst form of colonialism. And in that thesis, he also talks about the uprisings of the Hereros, the Nama communities, and other Namibians against those German forces. And that speaks to emphasize the fact that this question of a genocide and atrocities committed to against Namibian people is something that he's been, you know, uh, even as a scholar, yeah. preoccupied with. Now, on the issue of uh, the editor um, of the New Era newspaper, uh, to be quite honest, uh, I was surprised to to read about it in uh, in the newspapers, just like everybody else. Um, what I can assure you is that President Gengob uh, and his DNA is such that the question of press freedom, f freedom of speech is one that is fundamental to our democracy. Mm. We should not forget that uh, President Gengob, as chairperson of the Constituent Assembly, uh, is the father of the Nambian Constitution. Uh, he is the architect of the Nambian con Constitution. So he knows the difficulty uh, with which we gained those rights as Namibians as a freedom fighter, but also as a chairperson of that assembly. Mm. Uh, and his commitment to press freedom is total. Uh, at all times, the president would emphasize to all of us that as long, for as long as he's president of the Republic of Namibia, no journalist will be arrested no journalist will be threatened. And I can assure you that as the presidency, it is not something, it is, we, we, his, his words and his commitment to press freedom, something that we are proud of. We respect that. And we may have differences respectfully as I do with uh, many of you, but we will not threaten any journalist. We will not ask a journalist not to write this, not to write that. It's yeah. not in the DNA of the, the presidency that President Gengob is leading. So I, I can assure you uh, right here that uh, um, we are not aware. Yeah. And uh, we don't know what is the, the backstory to this whole saga we just read in the newspapers like everybody else. And um, that's about it. But you, so you were you were there when the president, uh, um, I think it was 2016 on World Press Freedom Day, 20, 2016 or 2017, when he spoke to you as journalist and he reassured you that for as long as he's president of the Republic of Namibia, uh, journalists are free mm. to write whatever they want. And no journalist will be arrested for their abuse. And I think it's because, as head of state, 
and also as an individual, as a freedom fighter, someone who believes in the rights of the individual, um, freedom of speech, uh, freedom of the press, these yeah. are key to our constitutional democracy. So you can very briefly uh, confirm and put it on record uh, on this platform tonight, Dr. Hengari, that um, the fact that New Era was questioning the transparency in the judicial, in the appointment of judges, which mm. President Gingo does on the recommendation of the, mm. of the Judicial Service Commission, that it was not a case of State House feeling being hammered by the newspaper and pulling strings for the, dis for the suspension of Jonathan. I Bela. can assure you, I can assure you, Toivo uh, Jebela, that it is not the case. There is no truth to that, and uh, no one should harbor such assumptions uh, because it is not true. Yeah. Uh, President Gengop uh, respects the rule of law. Uh, is a champion of constitutionalism and uh, as you also know the appointments of judges they come on the recommendation of the judicial service commission uh, the president um, signs and, and the appointment is made um, and we all know also yeah. that president Gengop has been a champion of transparency um, we we communicate openly, he communicates openly, um, he shares, he discloses his, uh, his financial situation in 20, yeah. 20, 20, 20, 2015. Yeah, in front of time, Doc. Yeah, um, was declared publicly, yeah. even his health uh, is declared publicly and um, but very few are, as, uh, are that transparent in governance. Uh, yeah, yeah. I hear you, Doc. <laughs> thank, you thank you for coming through, Doc. That is uh, Dr. Alfredo Hengari really just uh, bringing, us, uh, bringing us up to speed uh, regarding the, the 78th uh, session of the UN, UN General Assembly that uh, Dr. Hagegenkov attended recently. Thank you for watching.